Why did the young boy have trust issues growing up? Because his father didn't leave him one. What? Okay, let's talk about it. How to set up a trust fund is something that is actually very easy and frankly something that I think everyone should be doing. But there are some key things that you need to make sure you include so that you cover as many bases as you possibly can when you're setting up a trust fund. So in this video, I'm going to give you everything that I think you need to know when it comes to establishing a trust fund. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get started by answering the question, why should you start a trust fund? So as the great Benjamin Franklin once said, the only things that are certain in life are death and taxes. And I know, I know, right? Like death can be a sour subject to talk about, but it's necessary today to really bring home the message of why and how to establish a trust fund. Because some people think that only rich people and wealthy people are the ones that need to set up a trust fund. And it's not something they think they need to worry about. But listen, I don't care whether or not you have a million dollars or $10,000, okay? When you die, you can't take it with you. And someone's actually going to want your money or your assets when you pass away. So you wanna leave this world as organized and as clean as possible. Because if you don't, then you are risking your family and your friends fighting over you and your assets, especially during an intense time where they're already grieving or they should be celebrating your life. So I don't know about you, but I would like to be the reason that my family and my friends become closer together instead of them moving further apart, especially in a time period of my death. Okay, so number two, what is a trust fund? So you probably guessed it by now, but a trust fund is basically a document that decides what happens to your assets and your personal property after you pass away. So what I want you to do is to really think about everything that you own, especially for the people who are already thinking like, uh, I don't need a trust fund, okay? What happens to your car? What happens to the equity in your home? Okay, what happens to the bank accounts, your retirement accounts where you have money in? Heck, what even happens to your devices like your computers, your tablets, your iPhones, anything else you have? You know, I don't know. But basically, when you set up a revocable living trust, you get to decide what happens to your property when you are no longer here, okay? You can give your property to your children, you can donate it to a nonprofit, you can give it to a close friend or a mentor that really impacted your life, a cousin, a nephew, whoever you want to. The point is, you get to decide and you should. Now, on the opposite side, right? Like what happens if you don't have a trust fund or a will? Well, the state where you reside gets to decide how your property is distributed. So essentially you give all the control to the state. And in most cases, your assets are distributed to your heirs. So your spouse, your children, parents, siblings, nieces, nephews, etc. Now, of course, this is a little bit problematic. For example, maybe your spouse think they deserve more than your close brother. And that of course can drive a rift between your loved ones. So with that, we wanna make things very clear, right? We don't wanna leave the decision to the state and have heated debates happen amongst our family and friends. Okay, so number three, let's talk about what terms can you put into your trust fund? But before I do, if you're new to our channel, welcome. I'm Sean with Life Accounting, the accounting company that saves people from high taxes and low profits. Of course, today we're not talking about how to save on taxes or increase profits, but we are teaching a very valuable subject to our audience. So if you're enjoying this video so far, please support us by hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps this video reach more people like you who wanna learn how to establish a trust fund. And it just gives us the momentum to continue to create great content for YouTube. So have you done it yet? Yes? Okay, thank you so much. Now, let's go ahead and get into step number three. What terms can you put into your trust fund? So I'm gonna make this very simple. 
you get to decide the terms of your revocable living trust. So what does that mean? Well, first off, you get to decide what the trust is a beneficiary of. For example, if you own a rental property and your rental property is inside of an LLC, well, you can make your trust a beneficiary of that LLC. Okay, but but what else, right? Like, so you can make your trust fund a beneficiary of your primary home, your investment accounts, such as your stocks, your gold, your crypto, if you're into that, okay? Your revocable living trust can be a beneficiary of your businesses, right? Or any of the side hustles or whatever else that you want, okay? So that's the first step is to decide what your trust is a beneficiary of. And that is essentially the process of funding your trust fund. Hey, Sean, look, I can have a trust fund too. Okay, wait a second, not that kind of fun. But you get the point, right? Like, you get to decide what assets you want the trust fund to be a beneficiary of. Now, after that, as we talked about already, you get to decide, okay, who do you want the assets to go to? Now, the cool thing is, is that you can establish under what terms someone gets your assets, okay? And this is my favorite part, right? Like, you get to be very creative because here's the thing. You may want your son or your daughter to inherit your business, but you don't want them to get it at 19 years old, right? Like they may make poor financial decisions and destroy that business. So with a revocable living trust, you can say, okay, here are the terms and conditions under which you will inherit this business. So for example, you could say like, you have to be at least 30 years old. You must have went to college and earned your bachelor's degree or higher. And then number three, you have to have proof that you have watched 30 life accounting videos from start to finish, right? And like, okay, obviously that's just an example and I'm making up these terms, but the key takeaway here is that you get to decide. So as another example, let's say you have $100,000 worth of stocks and you want to give that away to your beneficiaries one day. So the conditions under which your beneficiary gets your stock can be something like you must be at least 18 years old. Okay. You must pass four randomized drug tests from this specific company. In this case, this can help you make sure that whoever's getting the money is actually responsible with it. And you can say something like, you must complete a year's worth of therapy and you can only use the money to start a business or to go to college, right? And these terms may give you extra confidence that you're giving your assets, your stocks to your loved one and they're also going to be responsible and carry on your legacy, all right? so, so again, you get to decide what terms and conditions that your assets are passed on. Now, the last thing you need to know about point number four is how to create the legal document. So the hard part is making some of the decisions in step number three, right? Which again is deciding which assets to put into your trust fund or the beneficiary of those funds. And then what are the terms under which those assets are distributed? Now, the next thing of course is to tie all of this together by creating a legally binding document document for your trust fund. Now, when it comes to creating this document, you have two options. Now, of course, you can do it yourself or you can hire an expert like an attorney. The pros and the cons of hiring an expert or doing it yourself are pretty obvious, right? It's all about whether or not you want to save yourself some money or save yourself some time. Of course, if you work with an attorney, they may be able to give you some tips and tricks that you won't be aware of even after hours of research. But you can still do it yourself using a website with templates like lawdepot.com or nolo.com. All right, now moving right along to number five appoint a trustee. So the trustee is the person who will manage the trust. Now, as long as you are alive, you will be the trustee. However, when you die, the trustee is the person that you appoint for transferring the assets to your beneficiary. Okay, so typically the primary beneficiary, like your spouse or the oldest child, may be the trustee, and they will continue to manage the trust in your absence, making sure that the beneficiaries comply with all the trust terms and the assets are distributed properly. 
And the last point is point number six, which is to execute the trust. Now listen, you can do everything that we just mentioned, right? You can go through steps number one to number five. You can even create the legal document, but your trust is not in effect until it is executed. And to properly execute the trust, you must sign it in front of a public notary. And the notary should be also able to stamp it or sign off on the trust as well. Now, while you're at it, you should also sign the trust in front of a witness and this person cannot be a beneficiary. All right. And this is just in case a legal argument arises and they don't have a bias, right? And then after that trust is officially executed, then bang, congratulations, you have established a trust fund. Now after that, or maybe even throughout this video, you may be asking yourself, what about a will? Like, do I need a will or a trust fund? And there are some big differences between a will and a trust. But one thing that they both have in common is they usually take effect after you die and help ensure your assets and possessions end up going where you want them to go. So if you wanna see me make an in-depth video about trust funds versus a will, please tell me in the comment section below. But that is it for now. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. We have two more videos coming up next, so make sure you check those out if you haven't already, and I'll see you over there.